years, creationists have been utilizing a political and media assault they have termed the wedge strategy. It's a well-funded effort to smear evolution in the court of public opinion and frighten teachers away from the topic for fear of negative parental sentiment and possible job loss. As they put it, our strategy is intended to function as a wedge that, while relatively small, can split the trunk when applied at its weakest points. The wedge strategy, as outlined by the Discovery Institute's Center for Science and Culture, is as follows. Phase 1 – Scientific Research, Writing, and Publicity Phase 2 – Publicity and Opinion Making Phase 3 – Cultural Confrontation and Renewal Phase 1 has been a farce, since their scientific research fails to pass muster when subjected to peer review but the credibility of the science behind their claims is not important. Publicity is where they make up for it. They have submitted a barrage of papers to a wide variety of publications and have had some minor success getting a few of them published. Each published article is then used as a propaganda tool to legitimize their ideology. Phase two, a continuation of the publicity onslaught they started in phase one, is an all-out media blitz. As the CSC states it, we seek to cultivate and convince influential individuals in print and broadcast media, as well as think tank leaders, scientists and academics, congressional staff, talk show hosts, college and seminary presidents and faculty, future talent and potential academic allies. They continue. Alongside a focus on influential opinion makers, we also seek to build up a popular base of support among our natural constituency, namely Christians. We will do this primarily through apologetic seminars. We intend these to encourage and equip believers with new scientific evidences that support the faith, as well as to popularize our ideas in the broader culture. Phase three involves not only debates designed to attack their own misrepresentations of evolution, but to use political pressure to insinuate creationism directly into the classroom. Every debate that real scientists have with creationists serves their purpose by providing an appearance of legitimacy and gives them an undeserved platform from which to regurgitate their non-science and it encourages the false perception that there's a scientific controversy, which there isn't. The CRC states, we will also pursue possible legal assistance in response to resistance to the integration of design theory into public school science curricula. Fortunately, whenever ID goes toe-to-toe -to -toe with science in the courts, it loses, but for years they have been trying to bypass the standard method by which new information is incorporated into textbooks. First, an hypothesis is presented. Next, facts and evidence are accumulated to support the hypothesis. Then the facts, evidence, and hypothesis are subjected to extensive peer review. Over time, the new theory gains widespread acceptance within the scientific community, and finally, the theory is incorporated into textbooks. Through propaganda and political pressure, ID would have their bogus claims go straight from step one to step five, avoiding all the difficult proofs and corroboration real science must attain. But if you're one of the brainwashed bipedal sheep who believes talk show hosts and politicians are all sciencey and stuff, error, 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 error.